Hey guys, welcome back to Satan's Hollow Part 7. Um, we're going to work on this power brick. I did take the bottom off of this power brick so that I can... Um, I took a bunch of pictures of it, of where the wires go and everything. So now, let's get it disassembled. Um, I did take those handles off of the other one. And I have a box here of the parts from Arcade Shop that I need to rebuild, the change the capacitors and stuff. Um... This one capacitor is huge, and I don't know why that is. Um, I don't know if somebody just had one and they replaced it, but uh, I'm not sure. But I have the correct two that go in here. So, let's see here. Maybe the easiest way to start, I gotta go grab a couple nut drivers, and we'll start taking this apart. We're gonna paint this and the two other handles silver. Now we're gonna paint the other parts black that need to be painted. So we're just gonna paint everything today. We're gonna to do it all outside with some spray cans so it should dry really quick. Okay, I have my uh, quarter inch socket set here so we can start uh, pulling stuff apart. And then uh, we will sand it down, which should only take a couple minutes, and then we'll be ready to paint the stuff. I think these are 5 sixteenths. Nope, 11 30 seconds. Yep. So we're just going to go ahead and take all this apart real quick. Those are five sixteenths. Um, might have to cut a couple wires and re solder them together. Which seems to be usual what has to happen. So now we could unplug these two for that oil capacitor. Let's pull these through. Um, this orange wire right here and this gray wire both need cut. So these need cut and re-spliced together. Of course, I forgot my cutter, so we're going to use my knife. Just cut through them. Okay. Then we have a blue and a orange or brown, whatever you want to call it. Those come out, and then this, I don't know what this is called. I don't know if this is some sort of an isolation transformer, but that's connect, disconnected from underneath. We still have to unconnect it from the top side. This is the other one here. Um, let's pull this apart. I took like six or eight pictures, so hopefully I'll remember. This time, I remember last time I screwed up and forgot a couple pictures. Should have brought my flathead screwdriver over here. Okay, um, I wonder if I can leave a lot of that connected and just unscrew this. That would save some time. Let me see. I'd like to get this painted and just put right back together, but I don't know. It's getting kind of late, it's 6.30 at night on Sunday. So we'll see if we can get it to dry fairly quick, which this Krylon spray paint does dry pretty quickly. So maybe we can get it to dry. There's still some sun out. So if I go outside, and paint this stuff in the sun. Maybe we'll get lucky, get it to dry, and then we can just put it right back together, which would be nice. I don't know if this is the right size. I think it is. I, 
think we're going to be able to leave most of that connected, which will save a ton of time. Getting all my ground wires unhooked. I like cleaning these up. I hate them when they're all nasty looking in the bottom of the cabinet. Um, let me go get a flathead. You know what? I got a screwdriver here I could probably use. I could turn this into a screwdriver so I'll have to go and uh, get a flathead. I want to get this uh, plug out. So I just got to push these prongs in. So there's that plug. You know what? Probably are going to have to disconnect it. Well, we'll see here. I'm not sure yet. Take out this plug, which these like to fall apart all the time. other plug okay I think we could feed it all through there yep so I drop all this out here that's awesome so that's out now we need to disconnect these uh, big capacitors here which see what size these are I think these are 3 8 and then I just lost my 3.8 socket I just had. There it is. Oh, it's a 10 millimeter. But that fits. I must have had it in the wrong location. That means my 10 millimeter right here goes up there. Okay. And on these uh, capacitors, we have to take the uh, bolts out of them. I'll have to go get my Allen keys because the screws that come with the new ones are not long enough to put all these terminals onto. I'm not even testing these ones. Like this one isn't even correct for here. So I'm just gonna throw them away once I get those terminals out of it. Okay. Got a couple more plugs here. I'm gonna have to flip this over. We're almost almost have everything out already. Let's get this uh, capacitor out of here. I don't know if we're going to have time in this video to make the uh, wood pieces for the uh, PCB to be held into the cabinet. Um, I did go buy a piece of wood. We have a new one of these as well. Um, right here. I did go buy a two foot piece of poplar that we can cut down and put our grooves in it for the PCB to mount in the cabinet because that piece was missing. Somebody had taken it out at one point. Now, I'm not worried about my labeling. It's all, they're all shot. You can't see them anyways. These screws will probably just clean up on the wire wheel. Same thing with this terminal here. The grounding terminal. Um... This ring is missing a couple screws. We'll have to find some new ones. I think I'm gonna paint these rings black this time rather than silver. I don't know, just might make it look a little cooler. Capacitors, at least this small one definitely looks original. Okay. Now we can feed all these wires up through here. I'd like to leave them connected to the 
fuse block if possible. We are missing a fuse here. I wonder if I can peel that sticker off that has the values of the fuse and maybe at least stick that back on. Okay, now we need to pop these two plugs out, which we just gotta push on the, in on these prongs and then it'll drop down. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. I guess we're going to have to unhook this one side. I better. Yeah. Should probably label these. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let me go get some tape and label those before I unplug those. Okay, I got a roll of yellow masking tape here. And we'll just put a label here, a G for green. So we start with a green one. And then that'll have the one on it and then we'll know from there over we should be fine. But what I'm gonna also do is put a label, a number one on this black wire here. I'll probably actually have to label those as well so that they go back on in the correct orientation because these fuses have different values. Like I can't read, oh, the first one's a five amp, second one's a five amp, third one's a third, three amp, fourth one's a three amp, fifth one's a three amp. So I just don't want to get the wires backwards and only feed um, three amps to a wire that needs five amps. So. Oh man. Well, I ripped my tape, so now I gotta start over. All right, that's garbage. Two. We'll just do one at a time. This uh, has a crack in this connector. Okay, those can go through the hole. I'll only be able to put a couple through at a time. Okay, so basically everything is off of this. Maybe I'll just leave that connected to that and just clean it. So now let's get the this off of here, the other handle. We actually need these bolts for the bottom because some of the bottom was missing some. And like I said, the power brick I took them off of was extra one for a burger, came out of a burger time cabinet. So now we have that. So all we gotta do is pop the fuse holders, these grommets, and let's see if we could save this. Somebody's got to remake these, I would think. I can print them, like, on white vinyl. Maybe I'll just do that. I know it's not on aluminum sticker material, but it probably wouldn't look bad. Because this looks kind of crappy. But at least I know what the values are, and I need to know that I'll remember in my head that F7 
is by this grommet. And if I forget, I'll just go through the video, look at it, and I'll be able to tell. So now I wanna pop out these black grommets here because I don't wanna paint those silver. I might start painting all mine. I was polishing them before with a rubbing compound, but I don't know if over time, if they're gonna get real corroded again like they did originally. They probably will. So I think maybe the paint might be the better bet. I painted that one for Dig Dug Gold. I thought that actually looked pretty cool. So now we just got these two fuse holders. So I wanna to try to get these out of here without breaking them if possible. But I've never seen that type of connector on there. That's a weird one. But I don't think we have to mess with that. I think we just push these prongs in. Yep, perfect. Oh, you know what? I should probably label these too. We'll put this one as, we'll mark this one a P that we know it's by the plug. Okay, that is a part. This is ready for sanding and paint. This is ready for sanding and paint. I'm gonna paint these straps black. So let's sand these real quick. Let's get them painted silver. And then we'll come back and we'll clean up the black parts that need to be painted black. And then we'll spray those black. And then hopefully at that point, the silver's dry and we can uh, start putting stuff back together. Be nice to just knock this out in this video and be done with it. I'm gonna take out the center grommet between the two just so I don't get silver paint on it. So let me open the garage door. We're just gonna sand it right here on the floor, right by the garage door. Then I'm gonna set some cardboard up outside and we're just gonna paint them outside. Okay, I just have some 320 grit sandpaper on my sander. have a razor blade to get that uh, sticky stuff off from the back side of the sticker and a hammer because that one piece of metal is bent.
All right, I'm gonna sand those handles down and then I'll come back and we'll paint these. Okay, I got some cardboard set up out there. I'm gonna use this paint here. This is high heat aluminum color. Let's see here, premium rust inhibitor. Does it have a color name? Yeah, aluminum. So this doesn't have any metallic in it. So it looks just kind of like the metal does. Um, we're gonna paint the insides of these handles first and then we'll paint this. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and do one more coat. But this stuff actually looks really good. It looks just like the metal did, in my opinion. So I think I'm gonna do this from now on. It's just a lot quicker. So now I'm gonna let that dry for a few. Let's sand down the black parts now. Now when I was at Lowe's today picking up more spray paint, somebody had mentioned on one of the Facebook arcade repair groups i don't remember which one it was um a satin black textured krylon paint that they used on a coin door and it looked really really good it actually looked better than a chip guard i've been using i tried to buy a can today but they were out of it so um when i'm in mentor this week i will try a different lowe's and see if they have one um the coin door for this Satan's Hollow is in really good shape. We're not going to need to do any texture work to it. We're just going to need to repaint it, take it apart, repaint it, and put it back together. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little tip here on all this wiring that is visible. I want to paint the metal that's rusty black again, satin black. Now, this is the easiest way to tape this stuff off and not make, you know, run the risk of peeling that paper off and stuff like that that has writing on it is to use aluminum foil. I use this for cars as well. If I'm doing an engine compartment on a car and there's like some hoses and stuff I can't get out, I'll just wrap some aluminum foil around it. So I'll just take some aluminum foil and do the big area first. I need a bigger piece. Try to cover it the best you can. Never going to be perfect, but. This side, the paper's all washed off anything that said anything. So now we can sand this. And this will be ready for a coat of black paint. I'm not going to show painting all these parts. Need 
one more piece of foil right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these sanded down and get these painted black. And I'm gonna put one more coat of silver on the silver parts and then I'll come back. I'm getting ready to paint some of these black parts. Um, I'm gonna switch to a satin black. I've been using a matte black, but I think the matte black is a little bit too dull. So I think all my coin doors and everything, I'm gonna switch to a satin black. I think it just looks a little bit better because sometimes the matte black, when you have a matte black front cabinet, it kind of looks like the coin door and the cabinet was all just painted at the same time. So I think it looked a little nicer to have this a little bit shinier. Okay, everything's painting and dry, painted and drying. I ended up painting those silver like they're supposed to be. So this stuff's drying. This is already touchable. Um, you can touch this stuff within 10 minutes. You can assemble it within one hour. So it's in the sun. It's probably still a good 75 degrees outside. Um, I did wire wheel this down here. So that's nice and clean for good contact for ground. I wire wheeled all these uh, bolts here to put it back together. I still have a couple more that are inside that box that I need to get out. But uh, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit more. Then I'll come back and we'll start putting it together. I wanna get these studs out of here too. So let me grab some Allen keys. We'll take those out real quick. These are real easy to take out. You just get an Allen key that fits in there. See if I can find it. I think it's this one. Nope, this one. Yep. Three thirty seconds. I think that's it. Nope. Uh, yep, three thirty seconds. Eighth inch is too big. So we'll take out these four studs. And then we'll just throw these capacitors away. I could test them, but I'm not even going to waste my time. I know for sure that this one, to me, looks original. I mean, just the corrosion on it alone. And that other one, they must have taken that from something else. I don't know what this came out of, but this thing is huge. The new one's not as fat around and it's not as tall. This one I think is even overpowered. And it doesn't really make any sense how the writing is on here. It does have 100,000 right here, but the 15DC I think is higher than what it's supposed to be. But I'm not positive. I forget. I didn't when I ordered it. I looked. The basically all these MCR games use the same ones. You know what? I'm gonna paint the strap for this one black. When I put my new silver one on, it'll look cool with a black contrasting band around it. We'll do that. And then the other two will be silver because the other, the new blue, big blue capacitors are black. So, all right, let me throw this stuff away and then I'll be back once this paint dries. Okay, these parts are pretty dry. Sun's starting to go down. They've been sitting for about 45 minutes. Let's start with putting the big capacitors back on. Um, had to grab them here. I know that the uh, bigger one was on the inside. This is a 56,000. This is 100,000. Look how much smaller they are. So what we're gonna do is figure out which way this ring goes. Gotta bend it back into shape because they had it all stretched out like that. And then we will stick these like that. Now I had to get new bolts to hold these rings onto the capacitors because one was missing anyway. So I might as well just put on all matching ones. So I have this box here of different size um, 
machine screws with nuts. So I don't think we need a super long one. That should be long enough. Let's go with one size bigger though. We're just gonna get this back together tonight. Tomorrow we'll do the coin door and make that wood because it's almost eight o'clock and I gotta get up for work early. So we'll get this finished up tonight or at least enough of it. If I have the right size screws, I'm going to use some new screws as well because those other ones are pretty rusted out. Okay, let's do the oil capacitor next. We need a new one of these as well, because this is the old one. They're just all rusty and crappy looking. Okay, let me go grab a few of the other parts. This I didn't bother cleaning because it goes underneath and to clean it, you have to desolder all those wires and everything and I'm not gonna get into that. All right, let's do this one first. Get all this aluminum foil off of here. Now we have to fish all this stuff through the hole. Try not to scratch up this fresh paint too much. I'm not sure which direction this goes. Let me look at it. I'm gonna say that's right. So now we gotta put these nuts back on.
You know, I think this one uses the bigger ones. I think. I don't know. No, uh, can't tell. Try this one. Okay, that's the size. Take this bigger one off because this one's for the other one. There's actually three different size nuts. Oh, grabbed the wrong one. One more here. Keep grabbing the wrong size. That's not it either. Where the heck's the last one at? That's it. Okay, now we could push our plug back through. You know what? Uh, I don't know if this is backwards or not. I can't tell. That's awful tight, those wires. It's backwards. I need to spin it. 180 degrees. Okay. That looks right now. Okay, that one's pushed through. Let's push through this one here. Okay, now we can put our nut and bolts on to hold the uh, filter board. One side of the filter board uses um, the ground wires go on the one side. OK, 
Okay, there's only a couple ground wires, three of them. Put this underneath there. Put them through the screw, stick them through the hole. That one don't want to go. To get a, a thinner one. That one's just a little too thick. Could have sworn I used that size on the other side, but the one hole might be bigger than the other. It's all right. I was hoping that it would just go through there, but when it went through the hole, it messed up the threads. Okay, now I have to reattach some of these wires. Well, I gotta screw this in. But the wires reattaching them, I'll probably have to look at the picture to verify it. I'm not just gonna go plugging them in and hoping I'm right. Okay. Let's put in the plug. These things always fall apart. Here's the ground lug. Oh, there's a fourth ground wire. So now I gotta take that back apart. Which way does this go? This way. Okay, that goes in like that. This comes in from this way. Then we gotta put our two other prongs. Probably really can't see what I'm doing. Let me look. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see it. But I'm working on the putting the plug back in right here. These plugs are always a pain. One. Okay, now if I can just get those wires to stay without moving long enough for me to get this fiber type material on it. And the screw back in which I probably should have labeled that one separate. I think it's this one, but I can't guarantee it. Nope, it's too big. Must be this little one right here. Well, there's more than one little one.
No, this looks like it. Because I remember, I believe I used a smaller Phillips bit for this one, I think. No, that was for the other thing. These are not, that's not the right ones. Those are for the uh, grounding bar on the other side, I believe. So I need to find that screw that goes in the center here. It should just be one screw unless they're using the same type of screw as the other ones. I think this might be it. Too long. How did I lose the screw when I had it just next to this? Is it the shorter one? Is it this one? No, that's a flathead. I don't remember it being a flathead. Nope, I think this is it. Fits. That's it. But I screwed up and there is a metal piece. This has got to go on before the screw. I've done a bunch of these and I always struggle with this stupid plug. Yep, this is the right screw because it matches the corrosion on the clip. Okay, so we got that back in. Now we got these two fuse holders. Now this one is P by the plug side. So this one goes on this side here. Got to line it up. Oh wait, it goes in from the back. Like this. And then this one goes over here. Okay, that's done. Now we're ready for the big uh, transformer, I guess we'll call it. I don't know what it is. Actually considered. So now we'll get that done. Let me go grab that. All right, so now we gotta finagle this through. I'm thinking uh, I might have to touch up some of this silver when I'm done. I don't know if I'm fingerprinting it up or not. A little bit. Maybe I could just wipe it off. I mean, we're not, we don't need to be perfect. Just want it to be cleaned up and not all rusted out. I think this just goes like that. Okay, now we got these four nuts. It's funny because this bigger, heavier one uses smaller nuts than the smaller, lighter one. And we're going to have extra hardware because I'm switching it out for some new ones. Okay, let's stick this back in here. Well, we got to screw it in from the other side. This plugs in here. Clips in there, rather. Okay, we got to screw this in, which holds this in place. Is that how that works? No. The fuse holder on the other side holds this in place. I lied. So I'm going to flip it this way. Got to put a Phillips bit in my drill. I'm going to use two more new screws. I have to kind of hold this up like this. Put this in place. Try to see which direction it's got to go. Yep. This has to go this way. Nope. 
not going to tighten it all the way because I want to get the other one started. Okay. These wires go through that hole there, but we got to put the grommet in first. So we have three grommets total. We gotta put this on. That's what those little screws are for. These two little ones right here, which I don't have any small ones like that. So we're gonna have to reuse these ones. Let me go clean the heads off. Okay, they're cleaned up. The couple wires that are gonna need to be soldered back together, I'll just do those in the basement later. Okay, now while it's upright, before we finish underneath, let's um, put the handles back on real quick. Grab those. Because then we can just flip it upside down right onto these handles. I cleaned all these screw heads. Let me get my nut driver because it has a magnet in it. There we go. Okay, now we can flip it over onto these handles. And now we can work on the underside here. We got one more plug that needs to go in here. And these are the, the two wires that need to be re-soldered together. Well, here's one of them. This one goes to, what does this one go to? Why does that not look right? Oh, it goes through here. Two, number five. Okay, we'll put all these ones through. These are for the fuse holder. Okay, now I'm going to have to look up for those ones just to make sure I put them on the right terminals, the right capacitors. These four go through here to this side. The two red ones go to the oil capacitor, and I don't believe that those matter either way.
okay and then I know that these two go to there these two have to go through here this one gets soldered to there and then this orange one I don't know where the other side of the orange wire is yet I don't know I will find it though so let me uh, look at a few pictures here why am I missing an orange wire where did that go I'll look for it in a minute here let me look at a couple pictures and I'll come back okay solid blacks on this side solid reds on that side red stripe black stripe and then also we have this jumper this one is red so this goes to the red side it has the red writing this one is black goes to the black side these can go either direction it doesn't matter but you can tell by the way that they're bent by the way that they go so let's get these screws out of here because we're going to put those studs in there Take these out and these studs, thread these in, just give them a little tighten. One of these are tight. This will work. Yep, there we go. So, uh, you know what? I am wrong the striped ones are going to go opposite because I spun these things around. There's a negative side here. The negative is the stripes. So everything that is striped, what is going on out there? Neighborhood dogs are freaking out. So the stripes go on the negative side. I was, I was looking at the picture right, but I forgot that these capacitors I had spun around. So that's something you definitely want to make sure you check before you just go sticking them on there and you screw up and put them on the wrong direction. Because that would suck. Now there's a couple wires on this side I still need to pull through and that's the missing orange wire too, is over here still, I believe. Yes, here's the cut orange wire right here. That's gotta go through this grommet like that. And then we need to put these four through. We are actually almost back together here. Not too much longer. It's kind of a boring video, I know, but if anybody is working on one of these and tears theirs apart and doesn't have pictures or remember how it goes, this will definitely save time being able to reference this. Okay, so here's my last two stripe wires, which go on the negative side. Now we can put our nuts on. And I'm not, yeah, I should be able to, oh, you know what? Forgot this. And I'm going to wait to tighten these down. I'm going to check my pictures one more time just to make sure that the black wires were on this one, but I'm 99% confident they were. Because this capacitor is the, I forget, it's the smaller or the bigger one. I think it's the bigger one. Okay, so those are on. Now we gotta take our solid, and these capacitors are marked plus and, and minus. Just keep in mind, anything striped goes on the negative side. Anything solid goes on the positive. So here's a negative, negative. Positive. I don't know what's going on out there, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, forgot that again. Okay. 
So this is our solder wires here. Like I said, I will do those later on in the basement. I'm not gonna show that. It's pretty self-explanatory. They just go back together. So I'm gonna check my pictures on that one more time and then we can tighten those up and then we're gonna come over here and hook the rest of those up and I believe we will be done. I am gotta figure out where this one white wire fell off of. Okay, this white wire goes from the negative of the one capacitor to the negative of the other. And then we can tighten these up because these are all correct. Then we just have a couple more wires to plug in and then flip it over, plug in the fuse wires, and we should be complete. Now these, I believe, are the 3 8 Okay, those are all hooked up. Um, we do have this other uh, ground wire I need to hook in. I need to screw that in with the other ones. So I'm going to do that real quick. Move the camera here. Maybe I should, I, guess, I think you could sort of see. But we gotta hook up that ground wire. Now this striped wire goes to the white, black, blue, and white striped wire. Plugs into that terminal there. And then we have a solid blue here. This solid blue goes to this fuse holder here. I might have to look one more time at pictures. Um, then we have this wire here, I believe goes to the fuse holder, but I, yeah, I need to look at that one. This is a brown and white stripe that goes to this right here. And then we have, I believe this is a solid blue, so I gotta see where that goes. And then we have a blue and white stripe here and a brown. So I think these go to the fuse holders, or at least three of them do. Um, I'm going to say this one goes to the fuse holder because it's coming from there. It's going to go that way. I'm going to say that um, this one probably, I think it goes to here, but I'm going to verify that. I'm going to say that this wire goes to the fuse holder and then these two wires go to the fuse holder. So let's put this ground on. I'm gonna look at pictures one more time and then we'll be done under here, except for the two wires that need soldered together, which once again is not a big deal. Now you gotta try to get these four terminals on there. This this spot is a pain in the butt. Could they put any more wires on the terminal? All right, I'll do this off camera so I'm not wasting a bunch of time and I'm gonna look at pictures one more time. Okay. So now we have these last two. This blue wire here goes to here, to this first fuse. And then it comes out and goes over to that distribution block. And then we have on this side, we need this brown and, or blue and brown. And then on the other side is a white and blue. Or I'm sorry, a blue and white stripe. Okay, everything is hooked up underneath here except for those two wires that need soldered. So now let's flip it over and we can plug in the fuses, which should be real easy because they are labeled. So we have a 
orange to orange, which is number five. So now I gotta get my tape off of here. So that's this one here. Okay, this is one. One and two are green, which go to the black ones. This is three, four. So if you guys, you know, are interested in cleaning yours up and you want it to try to look as new as possible, you can see here, it really only took me a couple hours to get it to look like this. I don't like the way that this plug is in here. It's crooked. I think it needs spun around. I think it goes this way. I don't know what the deal is with this one. There we go. Uh, you know what? The clip isn't working that good. Clip's kind of worn out on that one. You know what I'm going to do? This one ground wire is stretching really tight. I'm gonna put it on that screw on that side. It's not gonna hurt anything, they're both going to metal. So let me do that real quick. I'm just gonna switch that one over to there, get that plug to fit in there better, and then we'll flip this over and let you guys see the final results. All right, that's it, guys. It is all back together. I just need to solder those couple wires and just clean up that base, which isn't a big deal. So that's gonna wrap up this episode, guys. Um, this is part seven of St. and Tallow. Tomorrow we will use that piece of wood we will get those cleats made and we will restore the coin door, which is sitting on top of that vacuum. So, all right, guys, if you're liking what you're seeing and if you guys are interested in seeing the rest of the restore, please uh, consider liking and subscribing and I will see you guys later.